what I learned at DevOps is first of all, child masks are too small for my face. Second of all, oh, wow. <laughs> Depth perception is kind of messed up. And also, uh, karma is a, uh, a mean and angry person. So we'll just, we'll just set this here. All right. Um, I'm David Snyder. I'm Senior Director of Foundation Engineering at a company called Optum. And uh, essentially, that means all of the fun stuff like compute, network, and storage. Get a little closer. So one of the fun things about DevOps is you've got the vice presidents and CTOs that say, hey, we're going to do DevOps. And then you've got the people who actually get to do the DevOps. And then there's people like me in that top corner that are kind of like, how do I get started? What do I get to do? I get no shiny toys. One of the things you get to do is standardize on tools, which is really hard because people are opinionated. You could pick a tool that just prints out money, really free money and as much as you wanted. And there will be somebody in your team who says, gold's a better investment. I'm not using your stupid machine. So I have to use the money to go buy gold and the company's gonna fail unless we get this gold machine too. So managers do have to help with tool standardization so you can accelerate. Also, processes. Many people who might just be getting started out or are already somewhat um, evolved have these manual processes that look like that. Don't automate that. That will suck. <laughs> automate this. Because that other thing, that was based on people manually doing stuff. If you start here, you can just simply add to the things and make it bigger over time. But don't try to bite off the elephant in one bite. Um, another thing, you know, we've heard a lot about measuring, right? According to this chart, 0.8 haired boss, nobody did anything in December. So we promptly fired everybody, right? I got a big bonus for uh, spotting this dereliction of duty. Measuring's important, we've learned that. Um, more important than just measuring is interpreting and acting. So what really happened, someone like me, put this really huge project, everybody was heads down doing their stuff, and nothing got released, doesn't mean nothing was getting done. They worked really, really hard. Um, back to measuring, don't just measure like work, measure culture, you know? How am I personally doing? If I'm a manager and I just think I'm awesome because I do think I'm awesome, <laughs> I really should have a metric that tells me, are you really? Probably not in a couple areas. Making sure that people know why. Why are you pushing so hard? Why are you making me do all this stuff? Intent is really important. With intent, you can get back to that engagement thing. If they just think you're trying to push a date, they're gonna be just disgruntled, right? You can also help with some of the disgruntlement by putting people in a basically alignment. If we have all these different teams and they're just kind of doing their own stuff, you know, and they're doing great things, but they're constantly butting heads. Alignment helps considerably. <laughs> also, you might have a manager or a boss that looks like this. You know, you do not want to tell them that it's gonna be late. So you're like, yeah, it's gonna be fine. You know, don't worry about it. Um, you have to help your teams understand that sharing bad information like that is helpful to them. You have to make it safe. The only way you can make it safe is by telling them, hey, give me bad, bad feedback. Tell me if I'm doing something that is making your job hard, right? Please experiment. You don't know if this is gonna work? Let's try it, let's see what happens. They'll learn something. And as far as learning goes, there are a whole bunch of books out there to teach you, tell you how to be a learning organization. I've tried a few of these. I'm not awesome at this. I'm actually kind of poor and I'm trying to get better. But I've always been amazed when I try to do something or my team uses one of those methods, we learn stuff fast. And it's not always what we thought it was. Also, I'm terrible. I've got so many easy buttons. They, my team wants to take them all away. Everything that we've ever tried to do what, that was easy was solved in the 90s, right? So don't oversimplify for your teams because it annoys the crap out of them. Also, big organization like ours, we have teams of 40, 50 people all on a call and they're trying to figure out what to do. No one will make a decision, right? You need to help make sure that people make that decision. And also, you'll find out that, hey, you'll be, eh, I don't have any good people. I need to go hire some people so I can do the DevOps too. Don't have that mentality. Your people are there. They work for you right now. If you go out and you start talking to some of these teams, that's them right there. They are willing, ready, they want to try. They've likely just not had the opportunity. Every team that I've talked to, there's at least one or two people who's like, well, yeah, we want to do that. We just don't ever get the chance. So make sure you're giving them the space to do these things. So 
all of that stuff that I just said really boils down to one simple job. You know, you have to fix the culture. And it's not by saying, hey, we're gonna have good culture, right? You actually have to take action as a leader. You have to make sure that you are making sure that people don't treat each other poorly and you call that out. So anyhow, that's my Ignite, appreciate it. If you have any questions, wanna to talk to me, I'll be standing over there or over there or somewhere else, so <laughs> thanks.